Alright, what's up guys, and welcome to our first post-narrated Wi-Fi bell. Don't expect many more of these. I forgot to turn on my microphone and do well. I'll figure. I'll do this post-narrated then. So today we're going up against Gera, a good friend of mine, and uh, him like me are, you know, in those feel quarantine zones. We're going to call this a quarantine game, if anything. And uh, Gera always brings something unique to the table, and uh, we had a battle before, uh, when I didn't necessarily know about all that much of a new, not that I know a lot more now, but uh, when we had this game, I was ruined, heavily ruined, so I looked upon what what can I use, and I found something that, uh, you know, defensively could do something, like, okay, stun phase isn't very good, clearly right on is better, but um, yeah, as you guys see on the team, he has a person which is incredibly tough for me to deal with, for many reasons, but... It, it takes a speed tier, uh, I cannot be faster than it, which is, you know, tough, very tough. And um, fake out in combination with body slam clearly is something that is tough for me to do ring right. So I'm actually going to lead off with, um, if I remember correctly, my, um, I think it was Arc Assault. Is it called that? I can't remember. He leads off with Persian. I should have seen that one coming. Uh, no, I went up with Bakaruga. And I decided to stay in as I was kind of hoping he would U-turn over fake outing. Kind of, you know, I, I was feeling like that could be a possibility. But no, he fakes out. And then I think, alright, he's going to U-turn here, right? So I can U-turn myself, so I get the pilot option. No, instead of actually taking a hit here with uh, right on, doesn't make any sense. Uh, and I get you know, a decent momentum out of that, at least that was my thought process. He actually stays, you know, in. And I, I recognize that... Um, Errors of my way as body slam pretty much waste my Sil Valley and I'll U-turn, you know, I'll do damage, but yeah, it, it's not good. It's not good at all. So I'll bring in four in. I figured that you know it could have been one of my smartest choices. I'm, I'm kind of leveling here, but Rhino makes the most sense. And you know, I'm gonna get my rocks up. I want stealth rocks. It makes sense for the matchup, and um, I mean at the time it made sense. But you know he's a lead person. What do lead persons do to taunt you? So he got me. He got me good. I have an honest opportunity of actually knocking him out with an earthquake, but don't do that. Uh, <laughs> so I'll follow this up with a stone edge, and uh, he turns on me. And this guy will see. I probably should lead off with ride on. It clearly takes this hit a lot better. <laughs> so um, yeah, he's taking his sweet time to figure out what to do. And do. Uh, Decides to bring in Soul Liquor, the Haunter. And you uh, connect to Stone Edge, but it's a Sash Haunter. And uh, I know from our previous game that this is a Destiny Bond, so I'm gonna say, not taking the risks here. It makes no sense for me doing so, and I figured uh, Drampa makes a ton of sense, as especially defensive. He can take a few hits if he's forced to. And um, what do you know? Gara goes for an Energy Ball, gonna get the Sap Super awesome. Now, I was very, very scared to go for Destiny Bond here, so I was leveling, but decided to go for a Roost eventually. You know, I was going to the menu, can I switch out to something? It doesn't really make sense if I do that anyway. Um, so, so I'll be will backing out of this option, though. It's kind of funny looking back at this game that, you know, I was really second-guessing myself. And I went for Roost, uh, he brings in Mischief, and uh, yeah, that was clearly not a good play. Um, so, with Mischief coming in, I was kind of feeling, you know, this could be offensively orientated, or it could just be a screener. So, I was switching Garuga just to... Like, it was totally weird. I side play that Pokemon, and it doesn't, it doesn't have to matter anything. But, um, he actually goes for Dark Pulse. And, um, it does alright. And, uh, I'm just leveling, you know, what do I do from here? I really, really couldn't necessarily figure out what to make most sense here, you know. He should have Dazzling Gleam, he should have Dark Pulse, potentially Nasty Plot, and um, he could even have Sucker Punch, and if he has that, um, that's gonna knock out my Garuga. So, I eventually decided, you know what, a U-turn, I, I gamble it, uh, but he just stay in, and a U-turn actually does it right, and um, I actually follow this up with bringing in my Rhydon. Uh, I was Fearing that, you know, he could have been in a weird set, but at least he won't be super effectively. He has Ghost of Dark Pulse, and it doesn't do all that much with a Violet Active, and, you know, I felt confident. So I decided for Stealth Rock, you know, this was an honest chance of getting it. I'm like, you, you don't have torn two Pokemons, I hope, as it goes to Solix. 
And that was clearly a better play, as it just guaranteed that Pokemon to not die to rocks, and now I have to take a stand. What do I do with a Haunter? A and the question is not a lot. I'm switching to... Drampa. Now, Drampa is always slower, and Destiny Bond can't, you know, be used twice, so... Um, after some back and forth, I realized that, no, as he goes with Destiny Bond, um, I at least... He will go faster than me next time, so I'm better off actually just going for an attack here and hope that Sludge Wave or Sludge Pop doesn't take too much damage on me. Um, and he goes with Sludge Wave. And uh, it does a lot, like really, really a lot. And while Flamethrowers are knocking him out, I don't know if that exchange was all that good. And um, I guess I'm kind of happy I didn't attack with Rhydon, but yeah, that was that was a risk based. So. Uh, while Gara takes a few seconds to um, think, I'm thinking too, like, what do I do from here? Sneasel comes in, it's heavy duty boots, so um, do I have a switch in? Not really. I mean, the Pokemon that should be switched in is kind of whittled down. Ice Crush do take me out. So I thought Axe Assault is somewhat defensive. What is it called? Arctic Salt. I can't remember. Basically, that the village raptor that is freezing to death. Um, but he goes to a soul stance, and I was like, oh no. Uh, basically, if he has knockoff here, he wins. Uh, there is no switching I have that makes sense here. I could possibly you know, like bring in my repairer to potentially revenge kill it, but I'm not sure that works. But I decide eventually here to attack him just for the hell of it. I really don't know if I can take, like I said, knockoff do take me out, and I go myself a low kick. Now, he had knockoff or low kick, that would have knocked me out, but he doesn't. I get the low kick off, and uh, hey, we're not swept by Sneasel. Should have been, we wasn't. Um, <laughs> and he'll follow this up by uh, getting back his Persian. Now, I do a bit of a mistake here. Think about it. I should never have switched out. It makes a ton of sense here that he sack plays uh, or go for U turns as it's faster, knock me out and get momentum. I could have owned back the momentum. And the reason I say this be is because, you know, we just survived a Soul Sense variant of um, Sneasel. He clearly has a one other setup sweeper in Kingler. And I recognize that as switch out that, you know, I'm putting myself in a spot where I probably lose. I again, like. Yeah, I was lucky not getting out of a situation with, or lucky getting out of Sneasel's situation. But Kingler, that's another ball game. That's that's the guy you don't want to mess with. So I was in my life narration thinking, you know, this is agility, this is agility, this is agility. How do I stop it? I, I just said as it is. You don't. I don't have anything that switched in. Uh, I decided to switch in after Salt sacking it, hoping he would attack me. And I say hope because I do recognize that you know I'm. Screwed anyway. I've looked if Aqua Salt actually outspeed anything of relevance, but doesn't. So I, I, I'm fair. To, I, it's, it's fair to switch it out. Uh, but yeah, saying these things, you, you do recognize that you know I am. I am not good. It is agility killer, and it's just the worst. It is just the worst. So I go for a bolt beak. I have no idea why. It doesn't matter. Liquidation absolutely eats me, and uh, I'm thinking, all right. I guess switching Drampa, force it for a superpower, and then hopefully um, some other Mon should be able to take a hit. I was thinking more towards Rapidash potentially. So like I said, we were beating after a superpower. I was kind of a, a little bit of a scum play here. We actually go for Roos, thinking that uh, if I survive the superpower, I should be easily be able to stall him out. He doesn't have superpower. We, we are able to take that body slam. It does roughly 50% from us, and... Uh, there is no recover I can do here to get back momentum, so... Since he doesn't have a superpower, I can't wheel him down, so I'm actually going to go for Dragon Pulse, hoping that... Um, actually, I, I don't know, I was kind of in... You know, I was going to lose here. We do take the body slab, we're going to die for the next one. But it turns out Dragon Pulse is actually enough to kill the Kingler! And I was like, yes! I'm not swept! Second wind! <laughs> And this was so crucial. I found out later that it was Jolly, not Adamant, and that is also kind of stuff to, to take on. But we take it. We are still in this game, and it's incredible. I have no idea how to beat him, but we are still not swept. <laughs> Which is something I felt was kind of 
kind of incredible. Now, Giovanni comes back in, and quite frankly, I learned from my mistake. I'm not going to try to make this Pokemon survive. I do look at the option, but no. He's just going to U-turn anyway and get momentum back. So decide, fuck it, second the Drampa. You did plenty. As it goes to Bar Slam, I'm like, really? Now you do it? Okay, fine. <laughs> so my easiest switch in here is to bring in Florian. Now, I was back in my mind thinking, could he have knockoff? Could he have Seed Bomb? Like, what am I looking at? If he had Seed Bomb, I'm still not in range, but, you know, it's plenty of me of dying of something else later. But, you know, I'm out of options. So I realize I make another big mistake here as I go for Dragon Tail. Should have just gone for Earthquake, as there was really no reason not to. And the reason I say that is because... You know, he has that Grimmsnarl, Lesser Middle Evolution, what is called Imp Dimp. I, I have no idea what that emo variant is named. But you know, he, he do that play, you know, he gets me, and, and I'm standing here like, why? Why don't I have Roar? This this is terrible, this is awful, and this is all kinds of bad, as I recognize my, the errors of my way. And yet again, I am in a situation I should not be in. Now, I have an easy kind of switch in, there is sending in my Arosu Fax. I do recognize that that's a name I barely can say myself. That's kinda, kinda like what you do. You, you, you do those things, like I wanna be unique with my names and I name them something I can't pronounce. That's just fucked up. Uh, but anyway, it goes for Draining Kiss, so now I know this is a set that can't beat me because I'm actually a specially offensive Rapidash. Do you wanna know how good that set is? Not a lot. It's not awful, but it's not really that good either. Uh, as his special attack is a lot of row, row, low. Uh, he was probably thinking I was gonna go for a flare up. Or a sword stance, but like Rapidash is slower no matter what, so it doesn't matter. Uh, he's gonna go for Dark Pulse, which is fine. Um, at this point, you know, I'm in a situation where I can Morning Sun, I can pretty much, you know, stall if I want to. But quite frankly, I'm just prolonging his kind of death. As he doesn't feel comfortable switching out. Now, had he pulled that off uh, and uh, switching out, and of course uh, getting in his burst, you know, I don't know how that would have turned about. But basically, there are a few turns here of me trying to be cheeky and go to Mystical Fire instead of Dazzling Gleam, thinking eventually he'll switch out, you know, getting the Toxic Croak. And um, yeah, that doesn't happen. <laughs> so I go for Morning Sun here, and uh, after that, I think I follow up with Dazzling Gleam and. Uh, Basically, from there, I'm trying to figure out what do I do from there. Like, as long as Persian is active, I can't win. Rapidash shouldn't be able to take a hit that uh, that well. And um, if I'm not able to um, get a uh, Quiver Dance off with my um, Butterfree, then I'm kind of screwed too. So, uh, back and forth, I was kind of leveling, but I recognized that, you know, the only, like, real good play I can do from here is um, let's see if I say this correctly I was kind of leveling if he, you know he's gonna go fake out combination with the body slam anyway so eventually kind of like yeah I go into Garuga because if he u-turns try to be cheeky I, I get that right um, because I was switching foreign directly I'm kind of in the spot if he u-turns instead of actually attacking me uh, so I know it sounds kind of dumb but basically my idea was that if I do something weird with my Rhydon, I, in theory, makes myself get reverse swept as I can't beat Persian. So if he U-turns, you know, I get this play right and uh, I can, you know, deal with Toxic Croak. Uh, but if he attacks me, you know, I'm bringing in my Rhydon safely and actually are able to kill either the Persian or the Toxic Croak, no matter what, a Pokemon is going down. And I still had it back in my mind, you no know, Seed Bomb, Seed Bomb, Seed Bomb, you know, can I take it? At this point, I'm not sure. I never was. But yeah, it goes for Body Slam, so clearly didn't have the means to actually attack me. Um, and Earthquake is going to be absolute plenty. Now, the last matchup is Toxic Rogue, and I was thinking, you know, did Toxic Rogue get Auras for this generation? Because if not, Focus Blast is his best bet, and it could take me out. But I think Butterfree should be able to deal with Toxic Croak. Um, but And all these things going in my mind as my opponent is going to actually go for an Vacuum Wave. And, uh, yeah, about that. We actually take that vacuum wave, so, mm, like a boss, whatever that means. And we're going to retail with an earthquake, and that's going to be the game. So, Tugara, thank you so much for the course of battle. It was really exciting. And for everybody who's been watching, 
people doing you so well. So I really hope you enjoyed this post narrative game. And if you did, uh, do tell them, of course, comments down below if you can actually think of looking at games like this. I haven't considered doing post narration, but at the same time, it's kind of kind of chill talking like this and just leveling on the thought process again. I never haven't done that in like, what is like four months. Everything has to be live narration now. Uh, whatever. It's, as always, I think we're really watching. Have a great day. Take care, everyone. Bye.